morning all so sorry um just moving our what was supposed to be facebook live across here to instagram um because we just couldn't get a zoom to work for us i think it's probably a little bit um stressed with everybody else trying to do zooms and everything so lesson learned um 9 30 start is probably not the best one anyway katie is going to join me very soon i'm just going to um invite her when she comes along um so just to give you a little bit of a rundown on katie so um katie is a google ads expert hi maria thank you for joining hi guys um and yeah we we caught up with her and we were actually guest on her podcast um which I don't think has aired yet and will come pretty soon, but we talked about business planning and all our sorts of things, but we thought um, after we met her um, virtually, <laughs> it would be great to get her on here and talk to our audience about Google Ads because I know it's something that um, both Jax and I have um, had experience with from our own kind of campaign perspective, but we're still probably novices um, and I know a lot of our clients also get a little bit nervous um, when they, um, you know, sorry, I'm just trying to add Katie. I'm going to add her now. She's going to come on very soon. Yay. Hi, <laughs> we got there. Oh, thank you. I was just telling everybody that Zoom didn't want to play this morning and lesson learnt that 9.30 might not be a great time for us to do any more of these. Yeah, we'll have to do a 2 a.m. one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I was just giving a little bit of rundown on our experience with Google Ads and how we were probably a little bit nervous and we don't know what we don't know, so we thought it would be great to get an expert like yourself on. Um, but before we start, do you want to just give a little bit of a rundown on you and, and um, Sunday Digital? <laughs> yeah, of course. So thanks for having me, first of all, and we got around the tech issues. We did. But I'm Katie and I have been in the Google Ads game, I guess, for about six or seven years. I, uh, I had my own e-commerce uh, company about, and I sold that because I found out that I was actually more passionate about the Google Ads side of things <laughs> um, after using them to grow my own business. And then I moved to an agency and I, uh, I worked with some really great clients like Shopo. I ran their ads for about three years, Swim Mega Law, um, and, uh, and worked with a lot of really good, really good uh, businesses there. And then... I had my second baby and as you do, you always have a big life shift okay. around kids. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I decided to start my own business, which is Sunday Digital. Um, where I work, I do, I have sort of two arms to the business where one, I do the done for you client management for businesses. And then the other arm, which I'm really passionate about is the teaching side where I teach businesses how to profitably use Google ads to run their own account so you don't have to hire an account manager because especially if you've got limited budget and you don't necessarily have a lot of money to play with, hiring an account manager to do that for you just cuts into your profits. So my real passion is teaching people how to do that themselves so they can save money but also uh, get better results DIYing awesome. it rather than hiring someone else. I think a lot of our audience would fall into that second category <laughs> definitely um if not just to understand what is needed so that then they can make a call well on whether they do want to invest in someone else running it for them or continue to just kind of do it themselves so um something that really stuck out to us when we were you know first chatting to you is we love the fact that you talk about having um a profit focused google ad strategy because <laughs> we're all about the profit and all about um people getting a return on their investment um which we loved and I listened to a podcast a long time ago um, and one of uh, a fashion retailer spell who I follow um, have a couple of their items from Byron Bay. Um, so just side note, they did my course. <laughs> oh, well, they, um, they basically, she was talking about the early days of her starting out in e-commerce when they were first kind of moving from their markets to having online. And 
um, one of the questions was around what was kind of the big shift that moved you to the next level. And she certainly said moving across to an online digital advertising strategy was, if not the biggest decision that they did. And she talked about other things outside of Google Ads, but that was definitely, I think, the big player for her in just getting to a wider audience. They've obviously got an international audience now and they've, you know, their ideal customer is, you know, in a few places. Um, can you kind of talk to us a little bit about that whole profitability piece and maybe how that this could help scale or, you know, give a bit of a boost? Yeah. <clears throat> My, I think when it comes to paid ads, there needs to be a return on investment. And I'm very um, focused on for my clients and for my students, you need to have that return on investment. If it's not viable, there's no point investing that money in it. So when I talk about having a profit-focused account, it means you're not focused on irrelevant metrics like how many clicks you've got or how many impressions you've had, which I say are kind of vanity metrics. Like they sound great, but they don't do anything to drive your business forward. So no matter how many clicks you get to your website, if you're not getting leads and sales, they don't mean anything. So don't focus on the irrelevant things. Focus on the sales. Focus on the leads. So when you're running paid ads, it should be really laser focused on those conversion related metrics and not necessarily on the irrelevant ones. Like, yes, they play a part, but you do need to just be focused on what's driving the growth of your business. And that's the sales and the leads. So I think one of my frustrations is when I'm looking at working with a potential client or looking at someone's account, I often see that the person running it isn't focused on those metrics. They'll and, and, and if you don't know enough about Google Ads, you can easily get the wool pulled over your eyes and an ads manager can say to you, you've gotten 500 clicks this month, how great's that? And you can think that's a really good result, but the goal of running ads is to make money. So yeah. that should be the focus. Yeah. And so would you say then, um, is, there, is there a difference between, I mean, there's obviously going to be a difference between Google Ads and social media advertising or Facebook advertising, but... Would you kind of say then you'd put social media advertising in that whole awareness bucket, kind of use the social media advertising to bring traffic to your site? Like not? I say, I still, I, I use Facebook ads and it still needs to have a very clear performance element attached to it. I would say your awareness stuff should be fall into the organic social media. That's where it's not necessarily costing you direct money to pay, but Facebook as well, it should be, again, focused similarly to Google Ads. It should be focused on those conversion-related sales, leads, you know, all the good stuff. And yeah. I know that there can often be, uh, like, should I do Facebook or should I do Google? And there's definitely opportunities where one suits your brand or your business better, where if you – but they work they really work really well in hand-in-hand. -hand, hand -in -hand. And what I like to say is that Google captures people when they're literally – searching for what you sell so people are online they're searching they're typing in whereas on facebook you're trying to get in front of someone's face more of interruption style marketing when they aren't necessarily searching they're engaging in something else but they still might be wanting to buy or become a lead or something like that so they've got two really distinct um That's roles great... in yeah so it's it's not kind of like i i think a lot of Google or Facebook marketers will say it's like, like an us versus them, like Facebook or Google. But I am like, whatever works, whatever works best to get in front of your ideal audience. And you talk a lot about that, about your ICA, your ideal client. You know, it's yeah. all about that ideal client profile. Where are they hanging out? Some, And we, we often think like people aren't on Facebook 24 hours a day. So let's reach them on the other 22 hours where they might be on Google searching. Yeah. And um we kind of like always talk about the sales funnel and moving them from a cold audience to a warm audience. So definitely, you know, if people are Googling and searching for exactly what you would need or, you know, what you provide, we would put them in the category of they're in a warm audience because they're on the hunt. So they just need to find out about you. So that's a great point to make. Definitely. Exactly. And for us novices or people who haven't you know, had much experience and maybe go into a Google Ads manager because they get sent an email saying you've got a free $50 credit and then freak out and just log back out. They've upped that to $100 now though. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, can you kind of explain the differences in the type of ad? So I know that personally I'm fed ads obviously just like a normal Google ranking if I'm searching and it comes up either 
within, I don't even know the official terminology, but obviously <laughs> the search engine and then on the right in the column feed. Um, and then I've also been served ads in stream. Like, could you give us a bit of a rundown on the different types there? Yeah, so I think there's often the um, the thought that Google is just kind of like the search ads. There's so much more than that. Um, so there's search, which are, uh, you know, your text ads that you see at the top and at the bottom, so they can be up to four text ads and, you know, four again at the bottom again. And then you've yeah. got shopping ads where you've got your product image or someone's product image and a brand and a price. They're shopping ads for e-commerce businesses, which are really great. Then you've got YouTube. So YouTube is a Google property. So YouTube ads are part of Google ads. And then you've got Gmail and then you've got display ads. So it's all, it's basically 95% of websites are yeah. what's classified as a Google display site. And right. that means that you're eligible to be remarketed to or shown ads to on those sites. So Google is kind of all encompassing, but the majority of um, so if you, I guess a way to think about it is the search ads are when people's typing when people are typing into Google and everything else is kind of similar targeting to what right. you would use on Facebook. Okay, cool. No problem. And is there different pricing based on the different Yeah, so they're charged they charge you enter the auction and you're charged at a different you charge at a different bid rate. So it's it's based on competition and a number of different factors, but you you bid per click or per, or per impression so like facebook you're charged per impression whereas on google search you're charged you're only charged if someone clicks on your ad right okay so more of a yeah okay cool um, i just saw one of my friends just joined why are you online here eleanor <laughs> so um our experience with google ads is um we engaged with an expert which we were happy with we um and she explained it very well to us. I mean, obviously, to work with us as a service-based business, um, you know, the cost is obviously not like a fast-moving consumable, so it's not a $20 purchase or something like that. You know, there's quite an investment, significant investment. So she talked to us about the fact that you probably are going to pay more per lead than what you would traditionally maybe, but that's because the conversion value is obviously a lot higher. And I think once we got our head around that concept, we kind of understood where, you know, like how, how to work with the particular campaign as such. But can you give us kind of an example maybe between service-based business or a product-based business? You know, is there sort of any relativity to a cost per click or cost per conversion as such? I think the first thing before talk, even talking about cost per click and those would be you need to know your numbers. And that's, yeah. it's, when you come down to it, paid ads is really a numbers game. So you need to know how many lead, what your conversion rate is on your site. So out of every hundred people that come to your site, how many of those become a lead? And from there, how many of those leads, what's your close rate on that? And then you can work backwards and it, you, you need to establish the level at which you're profitable and at which those ads make sense to running. It makes sense to run. So when it comes to an average cost per click, that depends. It, it's so wildly variant on your industry yeah. and the competition and the keywords you're going after. So it's really hard to give those ballpark figures. Yeah. What I would say to that is that I would rather pay a higher cost per click and have a higher conversion rate than the in, than the inverse, pay lower cost per click and have a lower conversion rate. Yeah. So once you establish that you stop getting... Um, and, and it's very, very common. Everyone does it is stop. Oh. I'm here. I'm here. I don't know if Katie's frozen and if it's just me or if both of us have frozen. We're not getting, having much that. Oh, Katie's dropped out. She might just pop back in again in a minute. Sorry, guys. Let's see if she comes back in. Oh, technology is not our friend <laughs> during COVID-19. At least everyone's experiencing the same thing, I think, so we're... Really, thank you for your patience. So 
sorry guys for anyone who's just joined um thank you brunch and goals i thought so <laughs> um katie's dropped out but she will probably just jump back in soon so katie is our google ads expert here we go she's coming back thanks maria <laughs> nothing like a good old technology challenge hello hey guys it just kicked me out for some reason that's okay it was cute keep, keep going for me and one of our lovely followers said i can still see you but not katie so i knew you'd come back okay so, okay well, so you were talking um, about um conversion and cost per click kind of yeah so just being focused on rather than being a focus on how much you're paying per click focus on how much that lead you you need to know how much that lead is worth to your business and you can't run those ads until you kind of have worked back. And that's one of the main things that I find that when you are working with a, um, an account manager, you need to clarify those goals and say, okay, well, you know, if you're, if you work with a, if you're a service-based business, your maybe average order might be a thousand dollars. So work backwards. So how many of, how many people that become a lead pay that thousand dollars with you and then how many people that come to your site become a lead and it becomes a numbers game it's always going to be a numbers game love that data-led decisions as opposed to emotional ones yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly ah, awesome and i think i mentioned before that you often get well we often get emailed you here's a free hundred dollar credit or you know like to run a campaign or something like that is there kind of a minimum spend or budget that you think is that it? Just that sort of one hundred dollar credit that they offer, or is it a bit more? No, I would always say that if you're going to a test with ads to see if it's something that's profitable for your business, I would say you have to commit. You have to commit for at least a month and spend at least five hundred, ideally a little bit more. And the reason behind that is if you think that five hundred dollars might only get you five hundred clicks, and that's not much to test what targeting, what keywords, what targeting options work well for your business. Because the goal, really what we're trying to do is to find out the little pockets of targeting options that are profitable for you. Yeah. So you need to give it adequate time to test and $100 usually isn't enough, especially yeah. if you think that um, if you only have a 2% conversion rate on your site, that means you're only getting two conversions for that $100. Yeah. And that's the way, that's why knowing your numbers really helps is because you don't want to think, oh, I've got $100 to spend, I'm going to get 100 leads. You have to really think, well, that's only X amount of clicks and from X amount of clicks, I'm likely to get X amount of leads. Yeah, awesome. I think that's a bit of a common misconception too because um, of social media advertising and how affordable it is in terms of people boosting or doing sort of small campaigns. Is It's all well and good, but you can't definitely measure the success of the campaign off a small budget because like you say there's just so many variables which you know I mean I, I think it probably leads to another question that we're going to ask you which is really what does make a successful campaign so what are the elements is it you know artwork is it your keywords is it the copy you know is it a combination of it all, all it all comes down to really like you teach knowing your ideal customer profile because yeah. from there you can choose keywords that they're going to type into Google. And it, again, it will be a trial and error thing. But what one of the common mistakes I find is that you're trying to go too broad. You're trying to reach, reach everyone that might be interested in what you sell. Yeah. So using you as an example, if people were going to type in marketing coach or a business coach, that's too broad because you want to go after the little niche, the best use of your budget, the best use of your money and your time will be going after people that are looking for, you know, a female business coach that specialises in X, Y, Z. So go, you need to really target, find out what, get inside your ideal customer and target what they would type into Google. And that requires, that's the hard work is, is doing the research before running ads. The running an ad side of things is, is the easy part. It's the research and the understanding of the customer is the hard part. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we found... Um social media and you know our experience with google ads is that it's a little bit of a beast of its own when you get into the advertising manager <laughs> so um you mentioned that you support um people so that they can diy um like is that something that you think is good for people starting out like just to get a bit of a base knowledge as opposed to going to an expert mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think that if you're spending a small, if you've got a small budget and that's probably under 3000 a month, you should be DIYing it. And anything, the reason is, is because any fee that you pay on top of that is going to directly cut into your profitability. But yeah. also you don't necessarily, if you don't, and Google Ads is overwhelming. Like I remember when seven, eight years ago, when I first jumped inside an account, I was like, oh my God, like this is crazy. Yeah. And if you feel like that, which is completely normal, it's really easy to get, have an account manager say, I did, I got X amount of results for you and you just take them on their face value. So what you want to be able to do is be dangerous enough to understand and ask really considered questions and say, well, what was my cost per acquisition? What was my return on ad spend? Which keywords converted for me? Just know that even the terminology, just so you can start to engage in a conversation. Otherwise, you don't know what you don't know and that money is not necessarily being utilised. And the other reason is that you know your business better than anyone else. So if you've got a small budget and you don't, and every dollar has to count, you know your business the best. So you're going to make the best use of that money if you know how to use it. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think I liken it to SEO experts as well, which a lot of people are really nervous around, is that if you don't know what you don't know, it's very easy to be led astray or... You know, exactly. A lot of horror stories around, you know, people who have invested in SEO stuff, which just haven't delivered anything, but haven't done anything, which I think a lot of more people are a bit more educated on that sort of stuff nowadays. But I think I see kind of the same thing with Google ads if, you know, because it is a bit mind blowing when you when you pop in there to try and learn yourself. So it's great. And you offer yeah. some set up option as well, don't you, within your business? <laughs> Yeah, so I do, and and I, I say to people that are interested in like an account set up that I don't like to do an account set up if it's just going to, if you still don't know how to run the ads yourself because the best account set up is still not going to be profitable if you don't know how to optimise and test and learn and make decisions. So it's kind of like if you, if you went to, if someone asked you for a business plan and you gave them a business plan without giving them any training on how to use that to make decisions yeah. and it it's it's not a solution if it's just like a, a setup, I guess. So yeah. I offer a setup for people that already, you know, they, they've got an account or they, they need something set up, but then they they either want to um, have an ongoing account management or they know what they're doing and they just kind of want a professional, a professional to do it all for them with a the setup. But still I'm hesitant about delivering a product that then doesn't know how to be used. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and is there anything, I guess, just to probably wrap up, is there anything else that you think is kind of relevant um, in this current climate? Um, I know I've heard um, people talking around social media advertising. Cost per click is kind of affordable at the moment. Not as many people are obviously spending, um, you know, if somebody did have some money or they did have a particular product or service that, you know, they could promote comfortably throughout this period. You know, they might have something of need or of, you know, value to their ideal client that would really help them through this. Is Google Ads somewhere they think that they could start with right now? Yeah, so I've seen I've seen a mixed bag. One of my, my advice would be don't don't avoid Google Ads just because um, you've heard others are doing it. I've yep. got clients in industries that they're doing having more successful months than ever because people are flocking online and aren't able to shop in store. So that yep. foot traffic is transferring to online traffic. So it's really about you you obviously have to be um, strategic with how you think. So if you are in the travel industry, it's not the best time to start a Google Ads account. However, if you've got a service that people are going to continue to buy, like I've got a client in the baby space and mums still want to dress their babies in cute kids, so in cl yeah. cute clothes. Yeah. Hi, I've got one of my students on online. <laughs> um, so people are still going to want to uh, dress their kid in cute clothes so it just depends on what sort of business you have and thinking about it in that frame of mind but it's definitely not a one-stop you shouldn't be advertising it's if it makes sense and if people are still searching for what you sell if there's demand there you should be online yeah oh, great and katie if um anyone wants to find you and find what you're about let them know i mean obviously we'll tag katie on all of our posts but um your yeah you can Katie Griffin underscore, is that right? Yes, someone has the Katie Griffin one and I just can't get it from them and they're an inactive account. 
So if people can DM them and tell them to give it to me. Um, Ivy and Bird said, you teach both Facebook ads and Google ads? I just teach Google ads at the moment. Um, Google ads is my my passion. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of good resources out there. So that's where I, I teach at the moment, but I um, I can also help with Facebook ads. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, and I'm at sundaydigital.com.au is my website. You can head there uh, and ask me any questions. Slide into my DMs. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I don't think we've had any mm -hmm. other questions here, but we might get some over on Facebook, so we'll just tag you, and Katie will answer them in the comments if anyone's got any questions or think about anything later on. But thank you so much for joining us. Sorry Who about the problems. Oh, really I know. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We made it through despite the tech being against us. We did. We did. And um, yeah, I think it gave a lot more clarity, particularly to me, around Google Ads and some of the things that are important. Um, and even I think, you know, for those people who are just investing in social media or advertising, I think keywords are something that you could still be really, um, you know, mindful of as well when it comes to copy and it comes to content. I think that's something we overlook outside of Google and it's still kind of really relevant. So um, always comes yes, back to the client, which we love. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Katie. And I'll um, no pop a copy of this up on our um IGTV as well as over on Facebook for everybody. So we'll catch up with everyone soon. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, all.